Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be talking all about the Battle Elephant, which is available to the four Southeast Asian civilizations, as well as the more recently added Dravidians and Bengalis. In some ways, it's actually difficult to talk about the Battle Elephant as a single unit, when, for example, discussing how many Arbalester arrows they take can vary by a factor of seven, depending on which civ we're talking about. There's a few different angles to cover here, so to keep some structure, we'll start by taking a general look at the Battle Elephant, what they do well and what they don't, followed by a more in-depth comparison of these six civilizations, and what each is uniquely best suited for. To start with a very general overview of the unit, it does have some resemblance to the Knight, though costing nearly double the food. Stats-wise, they have more in common than you might expect, having just two more attack and one less pierce armor than the Knight, with the first major difference being they have over double the HP. While elephants are more expensive, you're clearly getting a much stronger unit, and as an illustration, head-to-head -head, the battle elephant ends with 60% of its HP left. You probably don't need me to tell you, it's a very strong unit in melee battles like this where bonus damage isn't a factor. That said, it's almost an equally large gap between a generic battle elephant and a Persian war elephant, meaning they almost perfectly split the difference between a knight and the Persian's unique unit. Now, one useful mechanic to know when using or playing against battle elephants is that unlike virtually all cavalry, they deal damage to adjacent units when attacking. Pretty simply, the way it works is it just divides their usual damage that they would be doing by 4 after armor is factored in, tracking any decimals, which means they can theoretically do up to about 3 times their usual attack when fully surrounded. So far, they seem expensive, but deal unexpectedly good damage with a ton of HP for cavalry. So what's the drawback? The main drawback is of course their speed. Here they split the difference between siege and most archers or infantry, ending up similar to a villager with wheelbarrow. Especially in Castle Age, where mobility can have so many benefits for raiding and choosing advantageous fights, this is probably the main reason you don't see elephants as often as knights, even with civs like Khmer they can do either one fairly well. Their second, less obvious drawback is they take a lot of extra bonus damage, not just from anything anti-cavalry, shown in yellow here, but many units have secret extra bonus damage against elephants specifically added on top, which is shown here in blue. The end result is their over double HP compared to other cavalry doesn't necessarily translate to twice as many hits taken against their counters. Probably their low-key scariest counter, which is incredibly easy to overlook, is the Genoese crossbow. They deal plus 10 or plus 14 after the elite upgrade, meaning they take out fully upgraded battle elephants in just 19 shots, so Genoese crossbows get over 5 times the effectiveness of regular archers. For other civilizations, halberdiers and or scorpions also generally do the trick quite cost effectively, and monks are also another natural counter given the elephant's high cost and relatively slow movement. For their own part, Battle Elephant bonus damage is pretty straightforward, with only a bit against buildings, and a little extra to gates, walls, and towers. Now just to briefly touch on their upgrades and priority, for the most part, it's pretty much what you'd expect for cavalry. In this case, I think armor is quite important, as you can cut down the damage taken from archers, sometimes by a significant amount. Getting all the armor upgrades, for example, cuts the damage from Arblessers down from 7 to just 3 per shot. Husbandry is also a good one to pick up to make your elephants as fast as archers or skirmishers, and is available to all except the Dravidians. Their attack upgrades and then the 20 HP from bloodlines are generally the next priority down, with attack also improving your area damage of course. In Imperial Age, the elite upgrade gives 2 more attack, 50 HP, and 1 pierce armor, but costs 1800 resources, so it's a big one to save up for, but is probably worth it when making 30 or more elephants. Then, at the Monastery, Heresy is great in theory, though only one of the Battle Elephant civilizations has it, whereas Faith is available to all of them, though it is quite expensive. On top of these basic upgrades, it turns out 5 out of the 6 Battle Elephant civilizations also have a unique tech affecting their elephants, giving each a slightly different flavor and specialty. Altogether, there's no question fully upgrading Battle Elephants is expensive any way you look at it, but so is throwing them away without upgrades. But now, with the generic aspects of the Battle Elephant out of the way, let's talk about what makes each of the six civilizations unique. Starting with the Khmer, they have a passive plus 10% speed boost as a bonus, making them faster than archers and even spear units without squires. Adding to that, they have a unique tech, giving 3 more attack for 300 wood and 450 gold. The fact this is in Castle Age makes them pretty scary, with up to 17 attack with trample damage compared to the Knight's 12, and obviously the Khmer's good farming economy can also help handle their high cost. Altogether, Khmer elephants are arguably the best, 
or are at least the most well-rounded, with no gaps in their tech tree and extra mobility. Next up is the Burmese, whose interesting flavor is extra armor. Not only do they have a passive bonus for plus one plus one armor, but also the unique tech Howda gives another plus one plus one for 400 food and 300 wood in Imperial, making them clearly the most heavily armored. Adding to that is their other unique tech, Manipur Cavalry, which gives their cavalry, including battle elephants, plus four attack against archers. Generally, Burmese elephants are by far the most useful against archer units, since you not only negate a good amount of their damage, but even get something slightly better than the Khmer's attack when you're up close to them. They make for an interesting contrast with Vietnamese, who also have an identity of tankiness, but do it by way of HP. Their unique tech Chatras gives plus 100 HP for a very cheap 250 food and 250 gold. That's a lower cost than three elephants, and gives five times the effect of bloodlines for only twice its cost. The downside is unlike Burmese, they give up some attack, missing Blast Furnace, but are still a great damage sponge for Vietnamese archer units, which do a good job of handling some of the common elephant counters. The Crossbow and Rattan Archer, for example, both have a bit of bonus damage against spear units. Next up, we have Malay, whose identity is very clearly quantity over quality. They're discounted by 30% in Castle Age, rising to 40% in Imperial, meaning they cost just 108 resources, compared to the regular Battle Elephants 180 or the Knights 135. Here, the trade-off is they're missing two of the Cavalry Armor upgrades, along with Bloodlines. Given they're less focused on the population efficiency aspect, they're in fact the only of the civilizations here to have heresy, which prevents your units from being stolen by conversions. Arguably, the low armor and HP isn't ideal against archers, but in melee, they give arguably the best value, and practically speaking, their cheap cost makes them the easiest to produce in Castle Age. In fact, double stable battle elephants is only a little harder to sustain than double stable knights, though obviously without the same mobility. That covers the four Southeast Asian original battle elephant civilizations, but two of the dynasties of India civs also receive them. The first is the Bengalis, who are probably the greatest challenger for Khmer over the title of the most well-rounded. Right away, they have a passive bonus leading to 25% less bonus damage taken, and are also more resistant to conversion. They also attack 20% faster with pakes, costing 375 wood and 275 gold which always struck me as the most oddly specific tech cost in the game. While I'd say Bengalis are associated more with elephant archers, battle elephants have a lot to gain by negating the insane halberdier bonus damage and also resisting monks, though we'll look at how they compare in both those matchups in a moment. The last one is the Dravidians, whose identity is probably as the worst battle elephant sieve, as part of having a terrible stable in general. They have no husbandry, bloodlines, plate barding armor, or even elite battle elephant, missing out on 50 HP and some attack right there. On the flip side, the unique tech medical core lets them heal for 300 food and 200 gold, though it's only 30 HP per minute, meaning it can take up to 8 minutes to fully heal. They also have Woot Steel, letting their infantry and cavalry ignore armor for a pretty steep cost at 750 food and 600 gold. And while you could argue they're a glass cannon with low survivability and high damage potential, to me, they're pretty clearly the worst out of the bunch. As promised though, now let's see them in some different specific matchups and when, if ever, a particular civilization stands out. To start with the obvious question of how they all do against each other head to head, it turns out they naturally create a very straightforward hierarchy. In Castle Age, with all upgrades, one on one, the Vietnamese high HP puts them at the top, followed by Khmer, Bengalis, Burmese, Dravidians, and then Malay. Similarly, but not identical in Imperial Age, it switches to Khmer defeating all others one on one, and Vietnamese falling down the ranking. Doing a combined average of these results has Khmer standing out as the most consistently strong against other elephants, though arguably a 1v1 fight isn't completely fair to Malay, who have their steep discount. It turns out, if you balance for that, they beat Vietnamese in Castle Age and Khmer in Imperial, meaning if you're turning the Malay's cheap cost into an equivalent number of extra elephants, they're technically the best in melee at any point of the game, while also having the lowest upgrade costs as well. Whether you consider cost efficiency or population efficiency as more important, there's a reasonable case that Malay or Khmer are number one, with Dravidians being pretty clearly the worst. Now, keep in mind, this is just in melee against each other though, and probably the main thing you have to worry about most often are pikes and halberdiers. In Castle Age, the difference between the elephants is relatively small here, and while there's some variability, of course, in how much HP they end with, there's nothing too exciting or unexpected. 
Notably, against halberdiers though, with their greater bonus damage, the Bengalis survive with by far the most HP left over. Of course, as a result of negating a quarter of that bonus damage. This is in fact the only situation where you'll see Bengalis are the best performer, actually by a fair bit. But considering this is the most common counter you'll run into, that is saying something. The most interesting and dramatic differences though come against archers. In Castle Age, there's a pretty big spread in the number of arrows taken, with as few as 50 for Malay, of course lacking armor and bloodlines, up to as many as 124 for Vietnamese with their extra HP, and 135 for Burmese with their extra armor. Of course, Burmese then add another extra armor in Imperial Age, where things really start to separate. Malay end up here with the same 50 arrows, while Dravidians lacking the elite elephant archer drop down to just 42. The others are in the low 100s, with Burmese being a major outlier, taking 320 arrows each. That's more than a siege ramp, and remember Burmese also have plus 4 attack against archers with another unique tech. It's hard to overemphasize how good Burmese elite battle elephants are against archers, and while battle elephants in general are maybe too expensive for 1v1s, in team games they're an amazing damage sponge against archer sieves, with the closest comparable being, as I said, siege ramps. Of course, another unit elephants commonly run into is monks. In this case, the main one that stands out is the Malay, having heresy, along with cheaper and weaker units that make for worse conversion targets anyway. As I mentioned earlier, all of the battle elephant civilizations have faith, though remember Bengalis also have a bit of extra natural resistance. It only adds an extra second or so on average, but is totally free and stacks on top of faith if you have it, so they distinguish themselves here a little as well. And finally, the last category we'll look at is against Siege. Against Onagers, it actually turns out Vietnamese do the best, and Malay and Dravidians do the worst on an individual performance basis. It's quite a similar story with Heavy Scorpion as well, with again Vietnamese standing out a little ahead of the rest, thanks to more HP outshining armor against very high attack units. One thing I appreciate about the approach to battle elephants taken by the game is that they all have something they're best at. As we saw, Burmese are very clearly the best against archers, Bengalis are best against halberdiers, Vietnamese against siege, Malay give the best value with equal resources, Khmer have the greatest speed and are probably the most well-rounded, doing the best against other battle elephants head-to-head, -head, and Dravidians, well, even they have a moment they shine. It turns out Woot Steel is so strong that they're technically the best against elite Teutonic Knights, which counts for something, so technically all of them do have at least one moment they shine. Now just before we finish, there's one more topic I'd like to address, which is the so-called elephant in the room and the hint that Persian changes are on the horizon in the patch notes. We don't know exactly what that means, but a redesign could theoretically include the Persians or a spin-off civ ending up as a seventh civilization with battle elephants. Of course, the Persians' only existing bonus or tech that could apply to them is Mahouts, giving war elephants 30% more speed, which would be pretty dramatic if applied to battle elephants as they are right now. Not only is it three times the Khmer's bonus, but with 30% more speed and husbandry, they would be faster than eagle warriors without squires. In fact, they'd outrun most infantry even with squires, which, while accurate to real life, as elephants are actually quite fast, it's not the direction they've gone in the Age of Empires franchise, so I have a hard time seeing that happening without some adjustment. Of course, remember the Persians in Age of Empires 1 had faster moving elephants, and outside of Khmer, that's not an aspect of them that's really been explored. Either way, I'm curious to see what the Persian rework might be, and how battle and war elephants fit into it. That'll do it for this one though. Huge thanks to Seb, GS Jasper, James, Jared2142, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, Samantha, Stephen, Woodruff, and everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.